الحمد لله الحمد لله نستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا فمن يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه واله وسلم ربي زدني علما ربي زدني علما ربي زدني علما Today we are entering into the month the Islamic month of Rabi'ah al-Awwal the month in which our holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam was born According to the consensus by most of the ulama and the terminology that ulama use for this purpose is called the jahhur that means the majority is on this side that that is the 12th of the Rabi'ah al-Awwal the 12th of this lunar month Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is the most beloved creation among all the creations Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this personality with a lot of qualities you can find the qualities of a lot of the prophets before him within this prophet and made him a rasul the rasul is a higher degree from the prophets called the messenger and from the messengers there are five that are categorized to be the ulul azmi min ar rasul the top five and from the top five he was picked up to be at the highest position called the imam al anbiya that when on the night of isra he went to bait al maqdis and all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were gathered in that small mosque Allah knows how he fit them all in there because he knows best and now everybody is wishing to lead them in prayers think about the quality of that one prayer that all the prophets are in that prayer subhanallah the beauty and the quality of that prayer can never be matched because when the prophet prays everything surrounding him in him prays not like us that in our prayers we're still thinking about who won last night packers or bears we're still thinking right after i finish from here i got to go and attend the meeting at work i hope imam cuts it short but as soon as he starts reciting the ayahs from the larger surahs we're still thinking oh my god they don't pray like that their prayer is so pure and now adam alayhi salam is thinking that i am the father of them all i must lead in prayers no alayhi salam is saying i am the first rasul to mankind i must lead in prayers musa alayhi salam is saying i was given the torah i must lead in prayers and after the adhan was called ibrahim alayhi salam steps forward and says ra'aytu mashriqa wa maghriba i have seen the east and the west Ma ra'aytu mithla Muhammadin I have not seen any anybody like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so fataqaddam ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam please come forward and lead them in prayers that's why he's called the Imam al-Anbiya he led the anbiya in prayers this is the person whose birth took place in this month and if you look in the Quran all the prophets of God when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to them calls them with their names ya Musa ya Muadam ya Zakariya ya Isa but the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's name is mentioned as a name only four times and there is only one surah in the Quran that is surah Muhammad and the four ayahs in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the name of Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was only for our understanding when he talks to the believers or when he talks to the non-believers. For example, in Surah Al-Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ قَلَدْ مِنْ قَبْلِهَا الرَّسُولٌ in another surah, Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رَجَالِكُمْ وَلَاكَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ 
In Surah Muhammad, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "Wa aminu bima nazzal ala Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam." And then in Surah Al-Fatih, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "Muhammad Rasulullah wa al-ladin ma'ahu wa shidda wa ala al-kuffar wa hamaa bainahum tara'ah wa tara'ah wa rukaa'ah wa sujudan yatabuna min fadlillah wa ridwan." So these are the four places. However, it is the beauty of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That in Arab culture, whenever somebody is beloved, is called by a name, not a given name, by a quality or by a situation in which the person is in. For example, a lot of the people will be called by after their firstborn. Like Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was called by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Haqas, O father of Hafsa. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu was given the title of Abu Turab as he was sleeping in the dust. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him the title of Abu Turab. Even though before that his title was Abu Hassan, the father of Hassan. And after that Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu started saying, Stop calling me by Abu Hassan, call me Abu Turab. Because that is the title Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept that exact beauty of the language throughout the Qur'an and calls Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a lot of times by the pronouns. For example, in Surah Al-Qalam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Noon al-Qalam wa ma yasturun Ma awanta bi na'mati rabbika bi majnoon Anta, pronoun, you. Ma awanta bi na'mati rabbika bi majnoon وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ وَإِنَّكَ Pronoun So calls him several times with a pronoun But then also calls him with very specialized nouns And the Quran is filled with these examples طَاهَا يَاسِينَ يَا أَيُّهَا الْمُزَّمِّلْ يَا These are specialized names. And there are many others. And the Quran is filled with all these specialized names. And Prophet Muhammad is coming was foretold by Isa alayhi salam by giving him and calling him by another name which is, was famous in the heavens. Isa alayhi salam says in Surah Al-Saf وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيسَ بْنُ مَرْيَمَ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِلَ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ First of all, yeah, O oh, children of Israel, I need to tell you that I am the messenger of your Lord. I am here to tell you that whatever is in Torah needs to now be fulfilled through me. I believe in Torah myself, but I have brought you some more good tidings as well. And I have come with a good tiding of a messenger who is going to come after me. His name will be Ahmed. His name will be Ahmed. So that's another name that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had before his birth. And this is not the only one. If you go to Daniel alayhi salam, the Daniel in the Bible, he gives the name of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Shish alayhi salam, long before Nuh alayhi salam, gave the name of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam to his people. And you start reading these scriptures, you're going to find so many names. That is why certain ulama have gathered up to a thousand names of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, found from the Holy Quran, from the Hadith, and from the old scriptures. Hundreds are commonly known. For example, one of the hadiths, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ana Muhammad wa ana Ahmad. I am Muhammad and I am Ahmad. Wa ana al-Mahi. And I am Mahi, al-Ladhi yamhu Allahu bi al-Kufru. By 
by whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will stop the kufr. وَأَنَا الْحَاشِرُ الَّذِي يَحْشَرُ النَّاسُ عَلَىٰ قَدَمِي وَأَنَا الْعَاقِبُ Five names of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes right in this one hadith. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would also talk about his entire ancestry with his people. Because he wanted them to understand that yes, he is a human in human capacity, however, he has this light of prophethood. His life is beyond our comprehension as he says that I sleep but my heart is awake. My heart doesn't sleep. He is being shown the Jannah right sitting in this world. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was once seen by the Sahaba that he was moving his hands forward and taking it back, moving it forward, taking it back, moving it forward, taking it back. They said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what were you doing? He said, I was shown the Jannah and I was looking at the tree of it filled with fruits. I want you to grab some to give it to you. That's beyond imagination. That is beyond the imagination of a human perspective. The problem is, we have become so disrespectful of the prophets of the God that we merely just think of them as that this is a human being. No. Think about the person who communicates with the angels. The person who is the Kalim Allah has to be at a very higher degree of spirituality. We are currently living in this world, the Alam al Asut. And Alam al Ahud is the height. You have to go through the Alam al Malakut, the Jabrut, and all the way up. Your ruh inside is very spiritual. The problem with us is that we have also been given the nafs, the self. It is the battle of the two that always happens. Whoever purifies himself is basically giving his nafs the flavor of his soul. That is why the nafs amara, the nafs lawama, the nafs mulhama, the nafs mutmainna, the one that is pleased with his Lord. Ya ayyatuhan nafs mutmainna irja'i ila rabbihi radiyatan maqliyah. Then when he is satisfied with his Lord, the Lord says, Enter into my worship. Enter into my paradise. We got to take our soul to that level of spirituality which is corrupted. And that is why Rahim alayhi salam, when prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, said, Rabbana Bring a Rasul, a messenger, to these people, the people of Makkah, among themselves, so that they understand him and he understands them. We are going to tell them your ayahs. And we're going to teach you from your book. We're going to teach them from your book. One hikmah and the wisdom. And the last part, notice that Rahim asked for this prophet several thousand years ago. And the last part is a very important sin. What is that key him? And we're going to clean their souls of all the filth, of all the dirt that we have accumulated over the years. That's so important. There is knowledge and then there is a purification through knowledge. That's exactly what I talked about in the last khutbah, that the litmus paper for the ulama is those who really, really follow, follow the guidelines Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. So after you gain the knowledge, you got to apply the knowledge. So that's exactly what he asks for from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is why Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say that I am the dua of Ibrahim and I am the good tidings given to you by Isa. So anyway, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa birth is celebrated by different people differently. So we're not here to talk about how people celebrate it. The bottom line is, after you're done celebrating it, what change has it made in us? 
And how much lasting is that change? So we need to take those changes, those good things that are discussed within the majalis, within your gatherings, and keep it with you and keep applying it to enlighten your inner self. That is your litmus paper of your gatherings. A lot of the time people gather, they talk good things, even it touches their heart, then they go home, and then they're back to the way they were. So that's exactly the bottom line. That when we learn something about this Holy Prophet we've got to take it and apply it and keep applying it so that we keep lighting our inner self because he came to you that he us to purify us. That's why his birth itself is so miraculous. You can read in several different books. Tawqat ibn Sa'ad, Sirat al-Nabi by ibn Ishaq, by ibn Hisham, basically Sirat al-Nabi by ibn Hisham. Then if you look at the Layl al Nabuwa by Imam Bahq, and then if you keep coming down to Umm al and then if you keep coming down to several others that were written in recent times, like Rahif al Maktoum, Bliya al Nabi, Allah alayhi wa there are so many. That basically is the reason. Because there are hundreds of books that have been written on his life, nobody could actually grasp it. Every time you read a book, a new phase of his life opens up. Because different ulama have done different kinds of research from their background. So the first half we talked about our Holy Prophet, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The bottom line is in these times, because for some reason we have lost the concept of respect, down the lines we have also lost the concept of love. We all claim to love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We all claim it. However, I gave you an ayah last Jum'ah. Wa ati'a Allah wa ati'a Rasul. The obedience. The obedience means that you have to follow this entity with a belief. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says somewhere else in the Holy Quran that Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell them if you really, really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are going to gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that ittiba, that fellowship is gone because the love factor is gone. You've stopped loving. The Iman has not gone past the throat. That's exactly what we need to work on. Of course, we're going to take some exercises for us to do. To do the Tazkiyat al nafs But then we have to prepare our heads mentally that, yes, I want to go this route. I want to purify myself. Until unless you're mentally prepared, until unless your heart and your brain are not aligned, your ibadah will be nothing but stress out. That's exactly how our ibadahs are. They're stressful for us. Because our brain and our hearts are not in alignment. So that is why the ulama has come with these terminologies of tazkiyat al-nafs, tazkiyat al-qalb, tazkiyat al ruh And then they go into more deeper things like sirr and khafi and akhfa. So anyway, the bottom line is we need to start working on ourselves. We all need to improve ourselves. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad al Nabi al Amin al Kareem, Muhammad al Nabi al Ummi al Hashimi al Salat wa Salam alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawmi din. Allahumma fillana dhunubana wa ikhwanina al Muslimina sabakuna bi iman. 
ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت لا اله الا انت سبحانك اننا كنا من الظالمين لا اله الا انت سبحانك اننا كنا من الظالمين اللهم صل على النبي اقيموا الصلاه